If you live in one of America's 50 states or five inhabited territories, you get your weather reports, thermometer readings, and boy band names using Fahrenheit. In fact, only four other countries and two territories, all with close ties to the US or Britain, exclusively use Fahrenheit today. Countries that still use Fahrenheit as recently as the 90s, including Belize, Jamaica, Myanmar, and Liberia, have all since switched over to Celsius or are using both scales side by side. That means more than 95% of the world uses only Celsius. So when Americans travel abroad, they need to know that fevers start at 38 degrees, tea is best brewed at 85 degrees, and when it's 30 degrees, you don't need a jacket. You can whip out your phone and figure out the conversion, but wouldn't it be faster if you just figure it out in your head? Let's show you how. But before that, a quick digression to why we have two temperature scales. As early as 400 BCE, Hippocrates observed that the human hand can be used to sense the severity of a fever. And during the 7th century Tang Dynasty, Chinese used a ceramic device called Peaky Boy to determine if water is hot enough to brew tea. It wasn't until the 16th century when people started to build precise instruments to measure temperature. Now, water wasn't a good medium due to its limited usable range, so alcohol was often used. Galileo even filled his thermoscope with wine, which can then measure temperatures below water's freezing point. But what should a temperature scale be pegged to? Since temperature measurements often involve what our bodies consider to be cold or hot, using body temperature as one end of the scale seems to make sense. And this human-centric scale is what Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit, a German physicist and instrument maker, based his temperature scale on. Like many before him, he started with alcohol. But realizing alcohol didn't deal with barometric pressure changes well, he then tried mercury. And so, the first mercury-based thermometer was created in 1714. Fahrenheit then spent the next 10 years creating a new scale for his thermometer. Fahrenheit set his scale zero to the freezing point of a brine mixture, basically a mix of water, ice, and salt. And on the other end, he set what he thought was the average body temperature to 96. On the scale, the water's freezing point was then set to 32. Now, the values of 32 and 96 were very intentional as this gave him a gap of 64 between those two markers. So Fahrenheit could simply inscribe labels by bisecting those two points six times. This is why his thermometer was marked in increments of eight instead of something like a five or 10. Later work by German physician Karl Wunderlich refined the average body temperature to the now familiar 98.6 degrees. Then in 1742, Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius developed a scale that is more suitable for scientific measurements as it is pegged to the freezing and boiling temperature of water and the now familiar centigrade system using pure water's freezing and boiling points to define a 100 unit scale was born. However, his original scale set freezing at 100 and boiling at zero, arguing that in nature, sub-zero temperature is much more common than boiling temperature. Thankfully, after he died, the scale was promptly flipped. So why is the United States the only major country still using Fahrenheit? Well, it had to do with the British Empire. Fahrenheit was adopted by the British Royal Society in 1776. It quickly became the standard temperature scale for Britain and its colonies, even in the newly independent United States. Guess America had trouble cutting the cord. Then the French Revolution brought the world the metric revolution, which aimed to modernize measurements with base 10 scales. Celsius fits nicely in that system and became increasingly popular everywhere except in the English speaking world. In the 1960s, the UK finally switched over to Celsius, compelling its former colonies to follow suit. The United States made a half-hearted attempt in 1975 with the Metric Conversion Act. It was purely voluntary, so naturally it failed. So for you Fahrenheit-only users out there, how do you convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit? Well, the formula is this. Take the Celsius value, multiply it by 9 over 5, or 1.8, then add 32. But if you want to do this faster in your head, you can simplify the equation. Just multiply Celsius by two, then add 30. For example, 15 degrees Celsius would be 15 times two plus 30, or around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. For Celsius between two degrees and 32 degrees, this will get you a Fahrenheit value within 5% of the action. Good enough to decide if you need to grab a jacket or not when you go out. If you want to practice doing this temperature conversion in your head, you can do so with our free app at firemind.com. FireMind is a set of digital flashcards that helps you train your brain to do this and other everyday math fast. It tracks your progress, provides timely tips, and lets you compare how you are doing versus other learners. Try FireMind for free today, and thanks for watching.